Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. And I've got a, a, a video this evening. It'll be very short, but it's something that has been bothering me for some time. And that is that people can have class three problems corrected non-surgically. And I think it's in many of the cases, it's better to be non-surgical than it is to be surgical. I have done several of these uh, over the past probably uh, 30 years or more, and I, to my knowledge, I've never had one of them that relapsed on me. And I've done several surgical class three cases that did relapse. And the person either had to go back and uh, redo these things, the oral surgeon had to redo them. And I've had oral surgeons that had me wear class two elastics. In other words, had a rubber band from here going back here that made the lower jaw stick out even further so that when they did the surgery, they'd bring it back and it would relapse some, but the relapse would not be enough to uh, create a problem with them. And that was some way or another they counteracted the real cause of the malocclusion to start with. Many of these class three malocclusions, they're very genetic in characteristic of found somebody that was uh, in the family that would be uh, class three also. But uh, the, uh, the class three problem could, could have uh, been just happened up with a person coming in. Usually it's a mouth breathing problem or some kind of problem that causes the pa uh, the patient to put their tongue in the lower part of their jaw and you'll see them chewing like this and you watch them and the tongue will be down under the teeth in front of the lower teeth pushing out on this. Now this may be just some uh, habit or something that was genetically uh, promoted, whatever it is. But I decided that with with the doing it this way that I'm going to show you, that you can avoid this relapse that is taking place in doing surgery on the class three cases, and just you know, I want to say doing surgery. That's just doing lower jaw surgery. In other words, just stick it out like this. You don't pay much attention to the upper. Just shorten the lower jaw and bring it back. Now the tongue that was crowded that caused it to go forward to start with has even less room on there. Now I know some old surgeons or none in particular, one that I am close friends with, who hardly will work on a class three case unless he does both upper and lower jaw surgery. Now, I want I have done two cases here that I want to show you just a few pictures out of each case and I've got a detailed video on each one of them. So if you want to go back and really go through and see exactly what we did on them, uh, you can go back and do do that. Or right, these two cases. Uh, and there's two different methods here, and we'll show that too. Let's go to the first, uh, well, I'm a, messed up here. My slides aren't coming up with it. Oh, here we go. All right, here are two cases that I did. The lady on the right side, uh, I did this close to 30 years ago or something. And it's, it's, I know them her now. She's an airline stewardess, and she still has just nearly perfect 
occlusion in her teeth. And the young man over to the left is a good friend of mine. He, uh, we started doing his work and uh, I was going to plan to do it, you know, by removing or having the six-year molars, the lower six-year molars removed. And, but it would take me uh, 18 to 24 months to do this. And he was, <coughs> excuse me, he was in the Marine Corps. And the Marines were hollering to get him out of there and they wanted to send him to the Gulf War. And uh, so they just gave me a certain amount of time to do it. So I had to do it what I call the fast way. And I sent him to an oral surgeon and they did it and he looked great. And I knew that this was too early and that this would tend to to relapse on him. So I came up with a lot, I already had been using this anyway, the, a class three surgical retention uh, method. And in uh, his case, uh, we have a, a video or two on him on just this retention method where we would fix an upper retainer and just had that you could snap in back here and you couldn't pull it out and you could wear class three elastics off of this upper retainer. And then I had a, a heavy wire bonded from bicuspid to bicuspid and some hooks on the cuspid down here and he wore class three elastics coming off of the upper molars down to the lower cuspids. And you could wear those if, if you wore those. And the jaw pushed the, the tongue or whatever caused the class three problem, push the lower teeth forward, the upper teeth would go forward too. I mean, it, so it was there if it relapsed and I used that and the oral surgeons appreciated that, being able to uh, secure what they did surgically, regardless of whether it tended to relapse again. But when he went into the uh, service, I had this retainer rigged up and made, but they would not let him wear it, so this was uh, this kind of irritated me. They didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an old Marine. I went in back in 1946, and I uh, know they're very strict. And they made him take this uh, retainer. They wouldn't let him wear it at all. So when he got out of the service, he came back, and he had relapsed, but not terribly bad. Uh, but it did look a little bit bad, and the teeth showed more, and he decided to just put up with it like that. So, go. I've got a video of him, a lot of pictures and things that we did, and uh, study that case and study the other one, if you like, there. Now, this is the two people, and they are both class three, and you look at this, here are their models. Now this is uh, this is models uh, that this is later on in the case over here. But both of them are class two. I mean class three cases. And what we would do in doing this, you take out this tooth right here. In other words, you send them in and get them. Now the one thing. They have to have a wisdom tooth back here in the back. Now over here, the wisdom tooth was underneath here, but he had a had a wisdom tooth. Now, so you take the six-year motor out. Now it doesn't take a great deal of space. In other words, you don't want to move this motor forward too much. You want to bring it out to about a class one relation right in here something like that. In other words, you've moved it about this far. And then you would drag these teeth here back. But you 
could actually take these teeth more than that, you see. You, you could pull them all the way back to here, and then this bicuspid would fill in here, and then it would fill in over here. Uh, so you would pull these teeth back into this. But you had to take these further than you needed to to correct this. So we would t take this and hook it up and pull with class two, I mean class three elastics now, and pull these teeth back and pull this along so that this could move further up to make this match. So as this pull these teeth back, and you can go and look on that, the Pagonian on this uh, lady was something like here, and it's almost the distance before the teeth come up. It's almost twice if you study her x-rays on that. So this is the way that this is, I want to call this a, a double jaw surgery, a non Sur uh, a non-surgical correction of double jaw problem here. So you pull this, pull these teeth forward. Now on that, this particular case we show you, we used a, a lip bumper out here. It went around here and had a little deal to up and come back and dropped it down and dropped into a tube over here. And this kept, this lip bumper, you pushed it forward to where there was always a gap between the lip bumper and the tissue. You have to have a vascular bed for these teeth to move forward into. And so we use a lip bumper and just push it out in front of the tissue and the tissue can be a uh, very vascular and you can develop bone structure as the teeth ease forward like that. So, but it takes some time to do this. And we use the slip bumper. You can see, you go back in the ladies' uh, case and you look there, I got a slew of slides on her. And you can find that in the video that we've got on her where we used a lip bumper and brought those teeth out that way. So you kind of do a double jaw treatment, really. It's not surgical. <coughs> and I don't mean to downplay the wonderful surgeons that we have in the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Metroplex. We have some absolutely great oral surgeons. I've worked with several of them. I've even uh, gone in and scrubbed in on a case and that we did the maxillary and the mandibular and did the genioplasty. It took about it from seven o'clock in the morning to one o'clock that day before we finished this lady. And she looks so much better. Her own children didn't even elect, uh, know who she was. I said, they said, this is not my mommy. <laughs> and, uh, so if she hadn't really looked good, I think they would have been sorry they did this. So anyway, this is the method and this is what we do. We extract the six-year molar and we start taking these two molars forward but we don't have to go all the way pulling from here to here. We do a part of the pulling forward of this with these class three elastics on everything. So in other words, we uh, hook this up here and we pull this back and then we wear the class three elastics to do that. So we close a lot of the space by pulling the front teeth back and just pull some on this to get it to a class one. And when you see you're getting close, you just stop pulling on that and pull on this. And you can regulate where you want to go with these teeth and how far you push this. 
Now if this goes out, as this comes back down on the the whole maxilla now, maxillary teeth are being brought back by the two bicuspids and the cuspid and all the anterior teeth over here into the space where the tooth was. Now we start this activity the day the tooth is taken out. We don't let the, the sides lapse down at all. We start that immediately. Uh, that makes uh, any, let me erase a lot of that and uh, show you that again. Now, we're going to bring this tooth, this molar, we're going to bring it up to it would be somewhere, somewhere along in here. In other words, about this distance right there. But when we get close to bringing these bicuspids back there, we stop pulling from here to here and we, uh, in other words, we go and pull more on the lower anteriors and just move them further. And we do that with class three elastics over here. And we have a lip bumper out in front of here so that with, as the pressure moves these teeth out, there's a vascular bed and the bone structure will move out with the teeth. And then this is kind of a, a, a double jaw. In other words, we get action up here, we get action down here, and bring that back. Now the problem is you gotta have a six year, mo I mean a wisdom tooth back here, or if uh, somebody wanted to do it, it had to put an implant or something back in the back. Now on the surgery over here, they just took this and moved the whole jaw back and left this alone up here. Now watch the difference as we go through this now. All right, uh, this is the lady with the lip, bump, lip bumper here and it's pushing forward, you see, we've advanced this thing, keeping this lip bumper out in front so that these teeth would have a bone structure develop and go along with them. And over here, you just move the jaw back. Just brought the jaw back. But I had it rigged up so they could wear the retainer that would hold this thing like this and the whole thing had to move forward if it relapsed it brought the upper teeth along with it and you wouldn't know it relapsed at all. So we've got this one now pretty well back corrected and these teeth are out. And if you go back and study this case, look at the x-rays. The, the pagonium did not go back with it. Uh, let me see if I can uh, kind of indicate that a little bit. Uh, anyway, that doesn't want to work for me. Uh, yeah, it did. Now, the drawing this off is going to be hard for me to draw. It had a pagonia and a chin, something like that. And the teeth uh, were tilted up in here. And when we got through with it, the pagonia was back like that. But this did not go back. Go look at the x-rays on this. And I had the teeth angled at the correct way. We put the uh, torque in them and brought them back. And go look at the x-rays on that. Did all these teeth moved back and left the pagonian out here. Now I had told the young lady, I said, if the chin is protruding and it bothers you, then we can come in and have somebody uh, shorten the chin or bring the with the genioplasty. But let's look at her face after we got uh, through with that. And there's no need for the genioplasty. Uh, here is this after the surgery and here is the young man after the surgery. He looks good and she looks good. The only thing 
this is good for a knower today and it would be just as good as it was the, the day I finished this case. And this young man had a relapse in there, but it doesn't uh, mess up his uh, facial structure. Uh, so uh, he's elected just to leave it there. But that's the way it is now. And you can uh, hope that you, at the end, they've got little deals. You can poke on that and just see the whole darn video if you want to. And the video on her that was done years ago, and uh, see that. Now, here is her case after, I don't know how many years, uh, she takes this uh, retainer out, and I don't even think she wears it anymore. Now, here is the relapse on the young man. Uh, this is 1991, right here on that. And it uh, has moved out and relapsed to a certain point here. But if they had let him wear this retention, I honestly believe, honestly believe that uh, I could have held those teeth in place and it would have brought out the upper teeth up here along with the lower teeth and the relapse. If you had something tied together on there. So we had uh, these teeth were uh, just nailed down from bicuspid to bicuspid and I had a deal on this wearing class 3 el elastics in this and so when this pushed forward on this it would bring these teeth forward along with the lower teeth on here. Now this we've never had to do it. In fact every class 3 case that I've done by removing the six-year molar and treating it and, and I've been doing these for uh, look like close to 30 years and I have to my knowledge now I've never had one of them that relapsed and drew back so uh, it is a safer way but it takes more time to do it. So you have to make up your mind. And now over here I was going that way, but he had to be through in so many months they were going to send him in anyway. And he made it and got back and it had relapsed, but not, ter not terribly. So let me see just a minute here. Uh, now here, here they are at the end. Let me see. All right. Here is this lady, the the stewardess, and this is it's it's twenty five or thirty, twenty five or more years after she had the surgery. I mean the non surgical procedure done, and you can go back and look at her record and uh, see uh, and to my knowledge I've never done a class 3 non-surgical with the six year molars that relapsed it came back like that and that's uh, the end of it and I hope you take this to heart and, and look at it and try it yeah, I'm not perfect and we may have done something else but I've done a lot of these cases not a terribly big number of them but I've numbered quite a few of them and I, to this day I do not know of one that has relapsed on me so uh, I'll say goodbye and hope you will look at this and then go back and look at each of these uh, people's case. And I think there's a little deal on the video where you can push it and it'll pull that up. You won't have to do much with it. But I've enjoyed uh, being with you here this afternoon. And uh, this uh, uh, YouTube stuff is, 
out of this world. Uh, so I'll be seeing you again, hopefully. And I am, I just had my birthday here, the 28th, so I'm on my way to 94. And, but I want to pass on everything I can to whoever wants to um, work with it and everything. So thank you, and I'll see you later. I'm going to stop this. And